Welcome to today's lesson on the components of blood, where we will explore the various elements that make up our blood and their functions within the circulatory system. In our lesson today, we will focus on understanding the functions of each blood component. We will learn how to recognise different types of blood cells and explain how each cell type is uniquely adapted to perform its specific function effectively. So far, you have learned about the heart and circulatory system. You now understand how blood travels through the heart and around the body, supplying oxygen and nutrients to tissues and removing waste products. This foundational knowledge of the circulatory system sets the stage for us to examine what blood is made of and how each component contributes to this essential process. Let's get started. Blood is a tissue that circulates throughout our bodies via blood vessels. It performs many crucial functions, primarily involving the transport of various substances. Blood consists of four main components, plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Understanding the role of each component and how they are adapted for their functions is essential. Over half of the volume of our blood is made up of a pale yellow liquid called plasma. Plasma acts as a transport medium for many different substances, allowing them to travel throughout the body efficiently. It is mainly composed of water, which carries red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets and dissolved substances including glucose, amino acids, urea, carbon dioxide, hormones, proteins and antibodies. The plasma enables the efficient movement of these materials to where they are needed, such as delivering nutrients to cells and removing waste products. Red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen from the lungs to all the body cells. They have several unique adaptations that enhance their effectiveness. Firstly, the biconcave shape of red blood cells increases the surface area available for oxygen absorption. Secondly, red blood cells do not have a nucleus, allowing more space for haemoglobin, the protein that carries oxygen. Thirdly, each red blood cell is filled with haemoglobin, which binds to oxygen in the lungs, forming oxyhemoglobin. This process is reversible so that oxygen can be released to tissues where it is needed. White blood cells play a vital role in defending the body against infectious diseases. There are different types of blood cells that have different functions as part of the immune system. One example is phagocytes. These cells change shape to engulf and digest pathogens in a process known as phagocytosis. There are also lymphocytes. Some lymphocytes produce antibodies that bind to pathogens to neutralize them and make them easier for phagocytes to engulf. Other lymphocytes produce antitoxins to neutralize toxins produced by pathogens. As a key point, all white blood cells contain a nucleus. Platelets are tiny cell fragments essential for blood clotting. When a blood vessel is damaged, platelets spring into action. To form a clot, Platelets release chemicals that trigger the conversion of soluble fibrinogen in the blood to insoluble fibrin. Fibrin forms a mesh that traps red blood cells, creating a clot. The clot prevents the loss of excess blood and prevents potentially harmful microorganisms from entering the bloodstream. Unlike white blood cells, platelets do not have a nucleus. To summarize, each component of blood plays a different role but works together to maintain health and proper functioning of the body. Plasma transports various substances. Red blood cells carry oxygen to body cells. White blood cells defend against infections and platelets help in blood clot formation. By understanding these concepts, you gain essential knowledge about the functions of blood and the importance of its components. Let's work through a question to consolidate our understanding of blood components and their adaptations. You need to be able to identify blood cells given microscope images. You can do this by identifying their key features. Let's work through an example of this together. Look at the provided microscope image. Identify the red blood cell, white blood cell, and platelets. Feel free to pause here to see if you can do this yourself. Now let's walk through the answer together. We must be able to recognize the key shapes and sizes. These are platelets which are cell fragments without a nucleus. These are red blood cells. They are disc shaped and lack a nucleus these are white blood cells. They are larger than red blood cells and contain a nucleus. They often have an irregular shape. This information can help us identify each component as described to correctly label the provided diagram. In today's lesson, 
we explored the various components of blood and their specific functions within the human body. We started by identifying the four main components, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. Throughout the lesson, we also learned how to recognize these different blood cells in photographs or diagrams, and discussed how their unique structures are tailored to their specific functions. By understanding the roles and adaptations of these components, you can gain an insight into how blood contributes to overall body function and health. Watch the rest of the GCSE Biology course at Sophos Education.